Today we're discussing a tool that you should have in your toolbox or in your arsenal of dog training equipment. Hi, you're watching Our Protection Dogs, a channel devoted to the raising, development and training of a protection dog. Okay, so a flirt pole. So for all you people that were thinking different things now than uh, a dog training equipment when I said flirt pole, get that sick thought out of your mind because that's not what this is. All right, so a flirt pole. This is what the flirt pole looks like, more or less, uh, as you can see. All right, and you have seen this in our videos. If you haven't seen it, please subscribe to our channel and go and have a look at all the videos on the bite work and how we use the flirt pole over there. I'm going to go in depth about the flirt pole today and why we use it. After I've been talking all my nonsense, you're going to have a look at the videos on how to use a flirt pole. We use this for training and for fitness of the larger dogs. So any bite work, doesn't matter at what age the puppy is or what age the dog is when we start off with their bite work, we usually start it off with a flirt pole. Now the flirt pole with this uh, leather rag at the end there gets pulled around left to right or in a circle and we entice the dog to chase this. This is something that we want to have a look at the prey drive of the dog. Obviously now the dog chases it, catches it and we can play all sorts of things on it but we then get the dogs interested. I think this is the mic that fucking fell there now. But in any case uh, you can still hear me. All right. So this is then what we use, the flirt pole. So if you don't have a flirt pole, I think you should get to use the flirt pole. It was introduced to me um, in the hunting dogs, with the hunting dogs, with the pointers, where the guys will use a fishing rod, a small fishing rod, not a, a six foot fishing rod, or, or not a six foot, like a, a 12 foot fishing rod or something. Just a small fishing rod, which they then have a wing at the end and they move that and the little pointers start pointing and they basically play with them and get them and used to that pointing instinct that they have. All right, now we use it for the bite work, like I said. Let's start at the end, yeah. yeah. A lot of people with their flirt poles will use a normal material rag. I don't like using a material rag because small teeth can get hooked into it and it can hurt the dog. I like using leather like this, strong, soft leather. And also what this does, it causes the dog to really have to bite really hard onto it to hold onto it and it can slip. I like to use, yeah, it's, I think it's about 30 centimeters, could be 30 centimeters, maybe longer. Uh, not too long though, which I use this end, little fingers that I cut over here, has got not, no reason. I just did it for, for the fun of it and creates a little bit more movement. Maybe I was thinking of fishing, maybe bass fishing and needed movement over there, I don't know. But this is what we want, a little leather rag like this that the dog can or the puppy can bite onto. I've just got a normal knot tied to it over here. I'm not using any metal, anything over there that can also break a teeth or hurt the dog. Then we go up, I've got a piece of paracord over here. Uh, I think it may be 50 centimeters, it's not longer than, than 50 centimeters. Let me just check, yeah, it's not longer than 50 centimeters. And here is, it gets interesting, let me see, no, I can't, uh, there, it zooms in. All right, so what I've got over here, is I've got a heavy duty fishing swivel or saltwater sea fishing swivel that I use because what happens is, because I'm using circular movement, the, it all f does that, tangles up at the end, and it just irritates me. So I've used a, a heavy duty fishing swivel with a ring which I've drilled through a hole into the handle. Now the handle over here, all right, as you can see, looks quite uh, like a neat thing, but all I did is I took a horse lunging whip now, I know they don't beat the horses with this, so it's not a, a thing of massacre or anything, please. Just a horse lunging whip, which I then cut off maybe 80 centimeters from the handle to the edge there, which I rounded, drilled a hole through, and created myself a flirt pole. You don't want your flirt pole to be like this huge long thing, you want to be able to control it with your one hand. Um, and the other thing about the flirt pole, when you move it around, it mustn't be quick little jerks like this and confuses the dog. We really want to get the dog to go from left to right or to right to left or move in circles. So he chases or she chases it, catches it, and then we can work from there. Now, I'm not going to carry on and tell you how to work with the flirt pole. You can see it in our videos uh, with the bite work, how we use it for the dogs to counter. Let them bite with the front teeth counter and start pushing as puppies already. 
The fruit bowl can be used for puppies, large dogs, any dogs that you even want to test to see if they've got a lot of prey drive or how intense the prey drive is of, of those dogs. Okay, so the flirt pole, right? It's not a long, as you can see, stick, not a long rope. It needs to be maneuverable and it needs to be quite strong. I also like the little bit of a bend that's in over here. So uh, the dogs can like really play with it and I can <laughs> imitate catching a fish. All right, then what you'll see is how I use the flirt pole for fitness. All right, so I want to warn you guys, when it comes to the fitness part of your dog or working dog or any dog, warm up your dog really good before you start playing with it, uh, uh, fitness things, especially like that with the flirt ball. So why do I say this? Because your dog is going to do a lot of these kind of movements where it's going to put stress on the one joint and the other joint and you want to balance that out as well while you're doing that. But you should view your sports dog or your working dog just like an athlete. It's got muscles, it's got brain, it's got a blood, everything functions exactly the same as we do. Um, they just sometimes I think they're better than we are in a lot of aspects, but let's go into that one now. All right, so we want to warm up those muscles, get the dog running around a little bit. You'll see over here in the video, I've showed you what I do with my dog Alpha. So he runs on the treadmill for about five minutes for warming up. Uh, then I've got him going up and down on the front, get those movements. And I also do some jumps with him sometimes. And then, what, well, not sometimes, lots of times. Uh, and very low jumps. When I say I'm talking literally about 20 centimeters that he jumps over like that also for warming up. But I'll, I ran him on the treadmill first. And then I start also to warm up those movements where he goes from the left to the right. Where I put him about 10 meters in front of me and I call him and I throw his toy to the left to the right so I can get that going. All right. Then what I do is um, I've got manners in my games. I want my dogs to have manners, otherwise he'll hurt me. He's run me off my feet a couple of times, so I, I need to put rules in the game where we still have to have manners. Um, I have him chase the flirt pole around me in circles where I'll go left around, right around, and I'll, when he does that, he gets rewarded by catching uh, the toy. So what I've done now is I have put a tug on it, a reward tug, so he can then grab that and I can even play with the tug with him as well. It's nice for engagement games at the same time. So I then go into a movement, was almost typical to a figure of eight, but I have him go to the right, I have him go to the left, I have him go to the right and he catches it. Obviously you'll see you won't be able to play for your dog for very long. You have to build it up little bit by little bit by little bit in time so that um, you then can have him maybe play with a flirt ball for five or six minutes. You'll see literally it takes five to six minutes and they are tired, tired, tired of playing. So for those of you that have, don't have a huge yard or big field where you can go run your dog and play with him, the flirt ball to drain your dog's energy is fantastic and to keep them fit. Okay, I hope that covers most of the flirt pole and I'm sure that there is a lot of other things that in dog training that we can do with a flirt pole um, that can be beneficial. So what I'd like you to do is, uh, if you need any comment or you need any questions to be answered or you need to put a comment down there, you feel, please feel free to put a comment down there in our comment section below. Subscribe, hit that bell icon and then uh, you can be updated to all our new and latest videos. So please uh, sit back and enjoy this video. And like I said, if you have any comments, or any questions, leave it in the comment section below.
Okay, so that was the flirt pole. Really, truly one of my most favorite tools to use in bite work or starting off with bite work and then also the fitness of, of, of the dog. Um, if you want to know how to use this flirt pole in depth, please go have a look at our videos uh, before that we've posted where we're working with Billy Bones on the flirt pole. Um, if you still have questions, please feel free to, to contact us. Um, I also do have our email is in there if you want to book a Zoom session and you need me to explain to you in detail how to work it and also work to the bite work, um, please feel free to do that. All right, guys. So the flirt pole, things that I just want to tell you about the flirt pole is don't overuse it. It's not something you're going to use every day uh, on the dog, um, um, unless maybe with the puppies when you do the bite work in the beginning, you're going to use it every day with the bite and keep it short, short and sweet. Don't take it on for long until the dog is so tired it doesn't want to do it anymore. You know, just as well as I know, it's like if you eat, you can eat to a point and then it's not nice anymore. It's just like you, you've had enough now. Um, but let's keep it to that where it's always, always leave them wanting more. Always have them enjoying it as much, much as possible. Don't overthink things with a flirt bowl. Don't get these huge, big bowls out there that's, uh, like I said, 12, 15 foot long and it's an irritation to work with. Don't use a metal bowl. We don't want to pull the dog's teeth out of its jaws that's why i like it a little bit of play in it um i really don't have anything more to say about the float pole um unless there's something that you can think about and then leave it in the comment section below and tell me about your experiences with the float pole i'd like to hear that uh, for now check out our next video which will happen next week friday and enjoy your holiday seasons wherever you are cheers